Welcome back to D20 Tactics. On this channel, I play Dungeons & Dragons with my friends, and we explore combat scenarios and play out the tactics used to defeat monsters quickly and safely, giving you more time to get back to roleplaying. I'm your host and Dungeon Master, Sarsen Zero, and today I'm joined by Fear No Equal, Azure Wolf, Blind Oracle, and Kron. Together we'll run through typical battles that adventurers might see playing Dungeons & Dragons. This is the third encounter in a Vampire Counts Castle, so if you missed the start, you can find a link to it in the description below. Grab your dice, draw your sword, and let's jump into combat. Hit points, abilities, spells, items in hand. Major Wolf has 118 hit points still remaining. He has one charge left on the Wanda Magic Missile, so that one's out for the rest of the encounter. Full charges on the Lightning Bolt. Arcane Recovery is still up. Three first level slots remaining. Three second, two third, three fourth, two fifth, and one eighth. The Simulacrum has still got 46 out of 46 HP, and he has four first, two second, one third, three fourth, two fifth, one sixth, and one eighth. The Cleric has 155 out of 155 HP remaining. I have a plus two shield and a Warhammer in hand. I still have both of my channel divinities. For spell slots, I have three first, three second, two third, two fourth, two fifth, one seventh, and one eighth remaining. And I have two out of three uses of my tan bag of tricks remaining. 150 out of 150 HP remaining, plus two short bow in hand, plus one arrows in the quiver, instrument of the bards slung over my back. 206 out of 206 HP remaining. We have a frost giant strength potion in use that gives us 23 strength. We have great axe plus two in hand, and we have action surge, second wind, and both uses of indomitable remaining. I do have to ask you to update the map with a jackal. Jackal's just hanging out, having a good old time, doing jackal stuff. Till he hits zero. Sort of like the simulacrum, honestly. That skull was weird, but he don't mind. Monsters, abilities, items, and numbers. This encounter has two mages and one archmage. The two mages have a couple of abilities. They are ninth level spell casters. They can cast up to fifth level spells. There's a variety of them. And they also have daggers, which they're never going to use. The mages have pre-cast mage armor, as one might expect from a character of that name. The Archmage is an 18th level spellcaster that can cast up to 9th level spells. They also have a dagger that they're not going to use, but they have magic resistance to go along with it. The Archmage has pre-cast mage armor, giving it 15 AC. It has pre-cast stone skin, giving it resistance to non-magical bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. It has pre-cast mind blank. Any effect that would read its emotions or thoughts, do its psychic damage, or charm it, are not going to work. The terrain is pretty straightforward. You guys are in a corridor. The doors are closed. Tactics. What do you guys think for tactics in this fight? We really want to shut that archmage down if we can. Is You're he not on the other side of the doors right now? Simulator. Yes, currently. I can't think of any spells that would be particularly dangerous unless those doors open. So we might be able to take down the mages and ready some shenanigans before we open the doors. Well, he could open the doors, too. That is also fair. More likely, I would say one of those mages will open the doors. Yeah. So the He's tactics here might simply hinge on the initiative order. I would love a haste if it's available. Yeah, I could do that. We could use globe again. So I have a six level slot on him. If we want to try to negate some of that. I don't know if it's going to be all too helpful here. Or It doesn't sound bad, but I don't know if we want to burn another level six slot this early. We still have two more encounters, right? It's coming off the simulacrum, right? Yep. So it's already burned in a sense. There's no reason not to spend it. Basically have him try to burn as much as he can with the big guy back there. If he stays alive. Yeah, because the little guys can't do anything about the globe at all. They can't cast above its level, but the big guy is going to go straight through it. Do we want to put it here or out in the room like I did before? It, again, depends on the initiative order, I think. Just a minor thing is I'm probably going to start with casting Bless because it helps with saving for us. So just to recap, we're planning on trying to burn the big guy as fast as possible or pick the little guys off. What was the call there? If we get enough of us ahead of the mages in the initiative order, I'd say we try to take down the two little guys. But if they get a little bit forward, then we burn down the big guy. Yeah. Yeah. Roger. Let's go ahead and roll some initiative then. Anybody up higher than a 20? Fighter has 20. Anybody have between a 20 and a 15? Two 15s. Who's got between a 15 and a 10? Rogue has a 13. Who's got between a 10 and a 5? Cleric has a 9. I have a 7. I think we got the jump, guys. Fear, you're up first. Let's open the door, move six paces to the east, and start beating on nerds. Rude. This is what you get for spending your life with your nose in a book. Somebody breaks into your house and hits you with an axe? <laughs> that one's a hard miss. We're going to try this again. Hey, this one's a crit. 24 damage. Attack number 3. Ooh, that's another hard miss. You know what? Let's just go for it. Yeah, we're gonna action search. A 23 to hit for 12 damage. 
That's a 26 to hit for 11 points of damage. Lethal. Yeah, there we go. I do have one more attack, but I'm out of movement. And I used my object. Unless you want to throw your axe at the guy. Swing wildly. After the fear, we're going to go to the wizard. He's going to move to east. I'm going to take a shot with a level 4 magic missile slot at that one. No, we're going to hit you with a shield. Shield works. To west, please, for the simulacrum. Please move owl four spaces. Cast the glow. After the Azure Wolf, we're going to go to the owl. And he's going to move in and get vanished through the rogue. Eight to there, you got four back. You want into the globe? Yes, please. After the owl, we go to the rogue. Let's go ahead and move into the globe, and then we'll go ahead and shoot our wizard friend up north there at advantage. 29 to hit. 29 will hit. For 42 points of damage. 42 is lethal. Move up behind the simulacrum. Hide bonus action. 26 to hide. That is my turn. After the rogue, we're going to go to the cleric. Doors are shut. If I use my full move to get to the doors, I'm not going to be able to ready an action. Correct. You'd have to dash to get there. I'll go ahead and move to the edge of the sphere of invulnerability uh, on the east side. My jackal has a movement of 40, so I'll just move him as close to the doors as I can with just the movement. And then I will go ahead and cast Guardian of Faith at the doors. It will hover at the doors and attempt to deal a 20 radiant damage to anything that moves to a space within 10 feet of the guardian for the first time on a turn. Must succeed on a dexterity saving throw. Are you good there? Yeah. The mages. Well, the mage. Mage is going to cast time stop. <laughs> when you said there's nothing he can do without line of sight, I was just like, ninth level spell is time stop. All he's going to do is time stop. I do not have any experience with high-level D&D play. It's always time stop. You briefly <laughs> stop the flow of time for everyone but yourself. No time passes for other creatures while you take 1d4 plus 1 turns in a row. I rolled a 1, plus 1 is 2. I can make 2 additional turns. I have to get through that door. I can move through this thing, right? You can move through it, but it's not a creature. I have magic resistance. What's the DC on the Guardian of Faith? Uh, 18. Archmage is going to get a 21 to avoid that, so it's going to take 10 points of damage. Guardian for the first time on a turn. Time stop says you take 1d4 plus 1 turns in a row. I'm going to have to do this again. So the Archmage is going to cast time stop as an action, walk to there, open the doors as a object interaction, no bonus action this turn. Then it's going to take its first time stop turn. It's going to take another dexterity save for the Spectral Guardian. It's going to get a 22 on this one, so it'll take another 10 points of damage. We're going to throw Banishment on the Fighter. Fighter, give me a DC 19 Charisma save. 22. 22. That will succeed. No bonus action for me. I'm going to move. That does end your time stop, though. Yep, screwed that up. Well, that was entirely wrong, and now I have to die for it. To the Mage, we're going to go to the Fear. Fear, you're up. Move into close quarters with the Archmage and explain to him why he's a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> First attack. Ooh, I should stop calling them nerds. I roll really badly when I do that. Second attack. That's 24 to hit for 16 damage. Third attack. 18 to hit. 18 hits. For 16 damage. And that's it for me. After the fear, we're going to go to the Age Wolf. I'm going to step into the room just north of the simulacrum, pull out the Wand of Lightning Bolt. It's going to be a DC 15 deck save. Let's go three charges. Let's over channel it. Why not? Max that thing out. Fails the save. That was 10 dice, so that's 60 plus 5. 65 points of damage, the Archmage drops. There we go. Let's get rid of it. Report hit points. 206 out of 206 hit points. 118 out of 118. 150 out of 150. 155 out of 155. Does anyone have any actions they wish to perform at the end of the encounter? Apologize to the fighter for not hasting them. <laughs> it's fine. I was wasting a lot of those attacks anyway. The adventurers are going to continue on through the castle, slaying everything that they see in their path and taking no damage in return. Three encounters down, three more to go before the long rest. Thank you for stopping by, and I hope you'll join us next week as the adventure continues. I'm Sarsen Zero, and I will see you next time.